Building a gigantic tower in South Asia that will dwarf any skyscraper in Malaysia and throughout the globe is nearing completion. We'll take a closer look at the world's second tallest structure today, the 118-floor Merdeka PNB Tower. Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia's capital city, is one of the fastest growing cities, a burgeoning commercial center. The Petronas Towers, one of the world's largest structures, are located here. The Merdeka Tower, which will surpass the Petronas Towers as Malaysia's highest structure, is the newest addition to the city's breathtaking skyline. Building the 644-meter Merdeka Tower began in 2014, making it South Asia's tallest building under construction. It will overtake the Shanghai Tower as the world's second tallest structure with its completion. The skyscraper's construction is taking place atop Malaysia's most significant cultural monument. It will view the historic stadium Merdeka, where Malaysia officially declared its independence. Indeed, many of the building's most conspicuous aspects were influenced by that momentous event. With his right hand, Tunku Abdul Rahman screamed the word Merdeka, which means freedom, seven times from atop the Merdeka Stadium in 1963. It is said that when Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad proclaimed independence from Malaysia, he held out the 144-meter-long spire as an extended hand. The Merdeka 118 mixed development project, which includes the skyscraper, will cost in the neighborhood of $1 billion. Work began slowly on this stunning tower. By October 2019, the skyscraper was more than 42% constructed and on track for a 2020 completion date. That was until the coronavirus took over the globe. All industries were touched in unexpected ways, including construction. The Malaysian government issued a movement restriction order that compelled the Merdeka 118 construction site to cease. The core will reach 118 levels in early August 2020, making it the highest building in Southeast Asia, surpassing the Vincom Landmark 81. By October 2020, the facade will have reached level 82. PNB, the country's largest investment firm, owns the building. The chairman claims that the tower's spire is 60% built. The end of 2021 is the target date for completion. Phase 1 and Phase 2 of the development will be finished by mid-2022, including the surrounding infrastructure. The Park Hyatt Luxury Hotel will occupy the top 17 stories of the building, which will have 83 floors of prime business space. The four highest stories of the skyscraper, 500 meters above the ground, will serve as an observation deck. It will be Southeast Asia's tallest viewing deck. Visitors will be able to access the observation deck via a glass-paneled elevator linked to the tower's exterior. Concerning property values, an adjacent skyscraper will undoubtedly increase property values. Consider Four Seasons private residences. While the original launch price was kept secret, subsale prices are astronomical. The duplex penthouse of 12,000 square feet built-up space is for sale for a staggering 44 million RM. Sunway Belfield and Opus KL pricing also reflect the rise in price point. When Opus KL was introduced in 2017, Merdeka 118 was still planning. One can question what a comparable home might cost now or in the future. Sunway Belfield starts at 652,000 RM and goes up to 1.8 million RM. Concerning property values, an adjacent skyscraper will undoubtedly increase property values. The stunning views of the city from atop the tower are a once-in-a-lifetime experience. The modern and symbolic architecture of the structure pays homage to Kuala Lumpur's rich cultural diversity. The building's diamond-shaped facets were inspired by a traditional Malay songket pattern, which celebrates the country's rich cultural heritage. The remainder of the structure is coated with glass from top to bottom, creating a stunning crystalline structure. The Merdeka MRT station will be linked to the building, which is now being renovated as part of the Merdeka 118 development. The building's recreational area is also within walking distance of a monorail station. Residents of Kuala Lumpur would feel more connected to the famous monument if it was made more easily accessible. It is hoped that the skyscraper would serve as a model for worker safety and sustainability in Malaysia's dedication to environmentally friendly structures. Upon completion, it will be the first building in the world to have all three of these prestigious green building certifications simultaneously. The project's creators must answer the question who will take over the world's second tallest building. The property market is precarious because of the present worldwide epidemic and economic climate. The business is in advanced conversations with possible tenants and will continue to aggressively seek new property investors, according to PNB's president. The tower's nearing launch has generated a lot of enthusiasm, but it has also been the target of severe criticism. Many in the opposition have termed it a waste of money, and the administration has been urged to focus on health care and the rising water problem instead. Although some have questioned the project's economic benefits, former Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak has defended it. Within 10 years, he claims, the skyscraper will break even financially. He believes he can show the world that Malaysia is a modern and prosperous country with this spectacular building. 
Many people have referred to the Merdeka Tower as a spark plug for progress, a light of optimism and a tremendous transformation in the history of Malaysia. In a statement, one of the company's founding partners, Carl Fender, added that the building was designed to enrich the social energy and cultural fabric of the city. So guys, with that, the video on Merdeka PNB 118 essentially ends here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.